Hello guys and welcome to Free Words Crew and welcome to 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and this is day 3 and in this video we'll learn about the activation function in neural networks. So we'll learn that what are activation functions, when to use and when not to use and what are the advantages and disadvantages along with the python code and their formulas. So let's start the video. So our first thing is what are activation functions. So activation functions are the vital components of neural networks or all the deep learning algorithms. They introduce the non-linearity and allowing the neural networks to learn the complex patterns and relationship. They operate on the output of each neuron determining whether the neuron should be activated or not based on the threshold. So we have a lot of activation functions like sigmoid, tan, relu, leaky relu, max out, elu. So that can be used based on the use cases. So now the question comes that why we use activation functions. So activation functions, if we don't use them, then our neural network will simply behave like a linear regression model. Okay, because these activation functions actually uh, make the neural network to learn and represent the complex mappings between the input and output spaces. And activation functions also maintain the flow of gradients during the back propagation which is the process of updating the model parameters based on the computed gradients of the loss functions. As we already discussed in our previous video, that's how the feedback loops work. Okay, so the activation functions often act as thresholding mechanisms cause it determines which neurons should be activated and are contributed to the input or not. Okay, it also help to choose to adjust the output range of neurons. The sigma squeezes the output between 0 and 1. Similarly, the softmax uh, squeezes output into the probability distribution. That in, in that way, these activation functions actually are useful. So now, let's talk about the different types of activation functions. Okay, the first type is sigmoid activation functions. You already heard about that in logistic regression. So this, this is the uh, activation function that squashes the input value to a range between the 0 and 1. It is most commonly used in the binary classification because you know it squashes the value between the 0 and 1. So when to use it? So we can use it for when we need the output layer to generate the binary classification. Okay. And it is prone to vanishing gradient problem as well because whenever you try to do the back propagation, the gradients become so small that it does not actually uh, update the weights and that's where your vanishing gradient problem. Uh, we'll discuss about the vanishing gradient problem and the exploding gradient problem in our further videos in detail with code as well. Okay, so now formula of the sigma function is there that 1 upon 1 plus uh, exponential upon minus x and the minus x is your uh, function that is your uh, equation of the line that you, that you want to do. And we have the advantages here and advantages include the smooth gradients and clear output interpretations because it gives 0 and 1 and disadvantages is it has the vanishing gradient problem okay okay now our next uh, activation function is uh, tan h that is called hyperbolic tangent okay so the hyperbolic tangent actually works similar to the sigmoid but it maps them to a value range of between minus 1 to 1 so that tan h is often used in the hidden layer of neurons as the tan h function outputs the value in the range of minus 1 to 1 uh, and its average output is centered around the 0. So it is a zero centered activation function that helps in mitigating the issue of vanishing gradient during the back propagation and especially in the deep neural net networks. Okay, as you see and its formula is that is exponential of z minus exponential of minus z upon exponential of z plus exponential of minus z. So in that way it just map the values between uh, minus 1 to 1. Okay, so when we use this activation functions, you can use this activation function uh, only in the hidden layers and commonly used to capture the more diverse patterns and it is less prone to vanishing gradient. And it is better than the sigmoid as well because it helps in the vanishing gradient problem but it is computationally expensive. So that's its disadvantage and it offer no sparsity as well because it has the values between minus 1 to 1 and with the help of sparsity we mean that 0 and 1 
okay because so all the neurons are working in this activation function so that's why it becomes so expensive as well okay uh, so the next activation fun function is a uh, rectified linear unit or we can say that relu so the relu is widely used in hidden layers due to its simplicity and eff effectiveness it outputs the input for positive values and zero for the negative values so it completely disregard the minus 1 in that 10h that introduce the non linearity so it can be written as fx of max of 0 and 1 okay 0 and x it avoids the vanishing gradient problem since it has a constant gradient of 1 for all the positive inputs and the flow of gradients during the backward propagation becomes easier and becomes more effective as well okay so now when to use this uh, activation function so default choice of hidden layers due to its simplicity and effective mitigation of vanishing gradient problem and also it is less expensive than that 10h so we we can use it in that case but it may suffer from the dying relu loop problem where neurons becomes inactive during the training because it just mark them to zero okay so in that way that that neuron just becomes dead neuron here okay so now now how we solve this dying relu problem we can solve this with the help of leaky relu activation function so the leaky relu activation function is a variation in the relu activation function that allows a small non zero gradient for the negative inputs so that the weight of the neurons should not go to zero so that it can prevent the dead neurons okay so the formula can goes like fx is equal to max of 0.01 into x and x so that means that 0.001 times x is really a small small value that it gives an output for the negative value as well okay and when we can use this so addressing the dying relu problem by allowing a small gradient for a negative value it is offered preferred over traditional relu for the hidden layers okay so if you suffer this problem of the dead neurons you can replace your relu function with the leaky relu function okay so advantages is just like that it can helps in addressing the dying relu problem and the disadvantage is that it it includes the potential sensitivity to to the choice of leakage parameters because it can it uh, it can like make your para parameters to leak from the uh, one layer to another layer as well so to solve this kind of problem we have parametric relu activation function and more other kind of uh, uh, activation function variations as well that can and be used okay we'll discuss about those kinds in our further videos okay so now in our next video we'll talk about the neural network optimization techniques that when or when not to use and advantages and disadvantages of all neural network optimization technique so just be with it if you want to learn more about prompt engineering generative ai you can watch my videos as well along with data science and machine learning explainable ai statistics as well and if you want to know about about the generative ai blogs you can also re read my blogs on the medium so we'll meet in our next video thank you guys thank you so much